Hello and welcome everyone to another edition of Going Virtual with Kate. I'm Kate. As we start every episode, go ahead and comment. Let me know where you're coming from and what you're doing to keep busy during this isolation. I really appreciate you joining us today and every week. Uh, I'm really excited for today's episode because I'd like to welcome Maricela Arias Cantu. Welcome, Maricela. She is the Director of Professional Development for the Society of Public Health Education, or as we're going to call it, SOFI. So welcome, Maricela. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, we talk about uh, where, where we're from and what we're doing to keep busy. Uh, care to share what you've been doing? Oh, uh, either walking our new puppy or spending some time to find some brief, brief meditation moments. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I've been trying to do more meditating. I feel like it's, I got to clear my brain somehow with all the chaos that's been going on and just got to zen it out. <laughs> awesome. So you, you, we're going to talk about the Sophie's virtual conference, which was the first virtual conference that Com Partners pulled off during this uh, kind of um, isolation. Again, I'm going to use that word a lot. Um, <laughs> So I really do appreciate you coming and joining us, and we're going to really dive into the whole process that you went through. But again, to everyone that is joining us, please go ahead and comment below. Um, let us know where you're joining us from, what you're doing to uh, keep busy. And then also feel free to go ahead and start funneling in those questions. We'll answer them as time allows. Of course, we always want to keep this kind of short and brief for everybody. So we'll just kind of dive right in there. So you're the director of professional development. Can you tell us what a director of professional development does for Sophie? Sure. So uh, what I'm responsible for is the whole educational portfolio for Sophie. So that includes our annual conference, our webinars, um, any self-study courses that are associated with our journals, um, anything that has to do with providing our educational content to our members. That's awesome. So you weren't with uh, Sophie for very much, uh, very long before this happened, correct? No, I actually started in December. So okay. this was definitely a trial by fire experience. Um, I do have experience with hybrid events in the past and actually doing a virtual conference, but 10 years ago, so it looked very different 10 years ago. Uh, but yeah, so I've only been with Sophie for about three months when all of this was going on. And uh, it's definitely been an experience, so it's been fun. So at what point did Sophie realize that they needed to move their on-site event virtual? I think a lot of things were going on. We were looking at the trends. Um, what really did it for us is when we noticed that South by Southwest canceled. Uh, so that's when our CEO and myself were emailing each other back and forth and actually over the weekend, just trying to say, I think, you know, trying to troubleshoot and trying to come up with different ways to solve the issue and answer our, our members' questions. So I think that's when we decided, or not really decided, but we were talking about maybe the possibility of going virtual. And, uh, and then we just kind of took it from there. Great. So something really unusual for us is uh, we were able, just because of, you know, the, the ducks falling in the line, we were able to actually, from the time you contacted us to the time we started, Sophie, we pulled this together in a week. Can yeah. you walk us through what that week was like? Uh, chaotic. <laughs> no, but what I tell everyone, it's, it's a beautiful chaos because I think that's the only way you can move forward with change and, and really evolve. So, so once we, we looked at different companies, Compartners being one of them. Um, so once we made the decision to move forward with Compartners, it did take us a week. Uh, for us to deliver the virtual conference. So a lot of the things that were going on during that time, I mean, everything was moving so quickly. So things that usually take maybe a week, we're doing it daily. Um, and then even some things that may take a day, I mean, it's, it took an hour or two. I mean, so, so a lot of things we were doing were just uh, making sure that comm partners had what they needed. So even before our kickoff call, um, so the kickoff is definitely key. Um, but even before the kickoff call, we were giving them the design we wanted for our virtual conference site, you know, the registration list, uh, the sessions. So that way they have all the pieces that they needed to build our site. Uh, and then during the week, it was still kind of giving them 
the information that they needed in phases. So for instance, we wanted to make all our posters electronic. So we provided all of those and then also to provide the information for our virtual exhibit hall. That's awesome. Yeah. So it sounds like you came to that first meeting really well prepared and with everything that Com Partners was going to need to to get this thing off the ground. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. So uh, talk, talk about a little bit about how the Com Partners team and your team work together. I know we really were symbiotic in that. Oh, we definitely were. I think once we had the, the kickoff, everything just moved in sync. So our program manager, Jen, was the point person. And so what she was excellent in doing was making sure that we had a priority list. And we would even have a priority list on a daily basis. So she would identify three key things that, take, that took priority. Um, so then we made sure that our team would focus on those priority items. So if Jen needed all the posters by a certain day, we made sure to provide those to her. Um, you know, and then Jen was really good with letting us know what needed to happen first. So the different steps. And uh, so, yeah, so that's I think that's what has worked really well with our different teams. And and she made sure to engage everyone on her team. So we were all copied on the various emails and made sure we had communicated with everyone. And then on our side, uh, we made sure to have different people in their different roles. So I had someone that would, you know, be the contact person for different sessions, uh, someone for our poster, someone for our exhibit hall. So you wanna make certain that you identify different team members to do different things. Yeah, it sounds very all hands on deck on both mm -hmm. sides with Com Partners and Sophie's side. Yes. Absolutely, yeah. So I always say that for um, making a virtual conference successful, you're gonna need just as much staff and time as you would for a normal virtual conference. So again, this one week turnaround Honestly, I thought it was impossible um, and it's definitely <laughs> not typical, but it really showed that if you put your mind to it, a virtual conference can be done and can be done really well. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the agenda. Now, I know Sophie's original conference and what we did with the virtual conference were a little bit different. Can you talk about that? Uh, about the Sophie live conference and how the virtual conference was different? Yeah, the agenda for it. Oh, yeah, of course. So. So I think right off the bat, we tried to make sure we prioritized ourselves as well. So we looked at the content. So the, so we had to, since we only had one week, we had to make certain that we were reasonable with the kind of things that we wanted to turn around. So for instance, all of our sessions, We so we looked at all of our sessions and we made sure to identify all the pre-cons and the post-cons. So we actually eliminated all of those and we focus on our core content. Um, typically we have about 45 sessions plus five plenaries. So what we did is we wanted to streamline it a bit. So that's where the priority comes in and making things simple. So we, out of the 45 sessions, we selected 12 because we only had that one week to deliver everything. So we focused on the 12 plus the five plenaries and we made sure to only have two concurrent sessions at a time. So typically live, we have six, but we didn't want to create viewer fatigue um, for our members. So we made sure to really you know, prioritize and focus on the 12 sessions. And that's where our planning committee came into play uh, because they helped us select the top sessions for us to focus on during that first week. Um, you can do it also probably, but if you have a little bit more time, you can send it out maybe to your members and have them do a quick poll or what, you know, do it a crowdsourcing sort of way. Um, but since we only had a, a week to do this, we really want need to move quickly. So we engaged our planning committee. And what we did too with the rest of the sessions is we delivered the rest of the sessions also live streamed over the coming weeks. So the following three weeks, we had three days. So we focused on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and had two sessions at 12 p.m. and two at 3 p.m. Uh, we wanted to make certain to take into consideration the different time zones, so that's why we fo focused on 12 and 3. Uh, something else we did is made sure that all our live stream sessions were offered um, on, on demand for one year. So they have until May, I'm sorry, March 17th to claim their credit. 
That's awesome. Uh, just real quick, just a reminder to everyone that's joining us, go ahead and comment, ask questions, get those queued up. Also let us know how you're uh, staying sane through isolation. Um, Marcella, you did mention viewer fatigue and it's kind of interesting. I was on the phone with a friend the other day and she said, is it just me or am I just really tired after all my <laughs> And I was like, that's an actual thing, uh, something that my organization talks about a lot. <laughs> I think it's really smart that you took that into consideration. I think mm -hmm. sometimes people kind of forget that, oh, we're taking it on site, taking it to virtual. Just because it's we're doing everything we can to make it the same doesn't mean it is the same. And there exactly. is a real fatigue of watching your Zoom calls all day. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. That's definitely real. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're at the end of our day today now, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome though i really i think it's really impressive also that you guys kind of thought on your toes and figured out those core components what mm -hmm. is the important pieces and the content that is uh you know getting to to the the attendees what is it that you're you're promising them and are you still delivering it so i know that uh something that a question that we've been getting a lot is adjusting prices for virtual versus on site oh yeah yeah, me personally, I'm thinking, well, yeah, you don't have food and beverage, but you also have platform costs, staffing exactly. for tech. But how do you feel about all that changing pricing and things like that? I, I get that question a lot. Um, in fact, I just had a call earlier today and I got that question. So I, I recommend the same thing. I mean, because you do have to have, there are other, other costs associated, you know, the platform costs, the hosting, um, but also you don't want to devalue your content. Um, the content is still the same. So even with us, we actually were able to offer more CE credits. So if we were live, we would have only been able to offer 28 credits. Uh, but because we went virtual, we were then able to offer 59 credits. So wow. that's less than, I think, $10 a credit. So you don't really want to put yourself in a position to, to devalue your content. So I think it's really important to try and keep the pricing the same. Uh, what I did recommend to an association who contacted me about pricing, you know, because they're taking into consideration uh, their members and how they may not have the money to um, to to purchase uh, a virtual conference fee. And I say, you know, I think it's about how you communicate the value. So you can communicate the value with CE. You know, are you offering more CE? Um, also communicate the value of convenience. Uh, they are getting at the convenience of their remote location, whether it's home or hopefully their, their office in the future, um, but most li likely at home. Another thing is that they're not paying for travel. Um, so that's something else to consider and they're not paying for hotel. Um, the, only way, the only way I probably would offer maybe to look at some sort of, you know, uh, more of a value or a smaller discount is if your members are unable to, to uh, like if they are experiencing layoffs, then you know you might want to consider um, offering a, a more manageable price. But I wouldn't cut. I wouldn't cut the price. Right. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself. Really. Um, so you did mention kind of jumping topics here. You did mention session contacts. Now I've been doing virtual conferencing and, and uh, online events for a little while now. And I have to say that this was my favorite part of your, your conference because it was a big undertaking and, you know, everybody kind of all changed their mentality within a week, but you had these session contacts, um, which were training mm -hmm. staff members. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yes. So in our professional development department, it's really small. In fact, our staff organization wide is really small. Um, we have 14 members, um, 14 staff people. And so in PD, professional development, there are two of us. Uh, so we made sure to engage other people in our association to be these staff contacts. So, you know, on site, you probably will have something called speaker greeters. So these people go in, make sure the moderator is OK, making sure all the speakers have shown up on time. So virtually, you want to make certain that you have staff contacts. So what our staff would do is they would show up 45 minutes or 30 minutes before the session, made sure all the speakers were able to arrive on time. And you definitely want to make sure that the speakers arrive 30 to 45 minutes before. Um, so our staff contacts worked with them to get familiar with the platform. We use Zoom. 
um, to deliver our content. So become familiar with this, the platform, how to share the slides, how to stop share, you know, what, where the chat feature is located, where they're going to, where the moderator is going to see the questions. Um, and then you want to make certain that you have someone from the Com Partners to provide you with tech support. So they'll answer more of the questions of how to, I think something we learned early on was how to show a video. <laughs> so you, know, you can't just show, if you show it with a link, there's a certain way that you do it versus an embedded video in PowerPoint. So you definitely need to have that technical expertise. Um, but by having the staff contacts, it allows Com Partners to focus on the technical part and then the staff focuses more on the speakers with getting speakers comfortable because a lot of speakers may be flustered um, if they're showing up maybe 20 minutes for the session. So you kind of want to bring that level down where they can decompress, get comfortable. And then you have your moderate, moderator come in. So you still want to keep your session moderator. And so what your session moderator is going to do is going to control the time once the session starts until the end. So they'll make sure that they field the questions, they let, um, they make sure the speakers are on time. And then at the very end, they do the housekeeping of directing your virtual attendees to the CE evaluation, uh, direct them to future content and uh, so yeah, so you want to make sure you have that whole team involved um, in the sessions. That's awesome. And now that your session contacts, they were trained with Calm Partners, right? Yes. Yeah. And, yes, and they did an excellent job. So we kind of did it since we did this over a series of weeks. We became, I think, more familiar as the weeks went on. Uh, so our our team was really good with. Um, so for instance, our first week, we didn't have what we started doing is provide kind of infomercials or commercials. So the first week we delivered our content and then we came up with the idea of, oh, what if we produce a sponsor video, you know, to, you know, let our sponsors be featured before the sessions. So we came up, so our interns worked on a video and these videos included, you know, visit the Sophie store, you can purchase these products. You know, they told them about Sophie membership. And then there is probably a one minute video that featured an exhibitor per session, a different exhibitor per session. So that's something that our staff contacts became very familiar and comfortable with doing, with launching these videos right before the session started. And then they were able to become more familiar with broadcasting the session. So by the last week, uh, we actually only had Com Partners help us with the technical support for the first 30 minutes until the session started. And then they were able to log off. And then our Sophie team was able to take it on from there. Yeah, I can attest to the fact that you guys got really comfortable. I was on one of the first ones and I was on one of the last ones. <laughs> and it was like night and day. Wait a minute. What's going on here? It was, it was really exciting to see, too, that, you know, something that we've been doing for 20 some years, mm -hmm. we're really embracing. And they're like, oh, it is possible and it works. Yes. So you did mention a little bit about how you leveraged those exhibit hall sponsors and things like that. Um, but um, can you talk a little bit more about the resource page, the e-posters, all of those features and, and what you found the most useful or exciting? Sure. Um, so what's really nice is that the site, you can kind of build it the way you would like for it to look. Uh, so, of course, you know, at the top bar, you have the virtual exhibit hall button. So, you know, so once uh, an atten attendee clicks on that, they're able to explore the virtual exhibit hall. They go to different companies and then they can drill down on each company and then even participate in the chat role. So that's something that we were trying to use. Like we used our social media ambassadors to direct people to go to the chat role and communicate with, with our exhibitors and ask them questions. Uh, we also had a resources page. So because of COVID-19 and we do public health education, uh, we, focus, we put a lot of content in there that focused on COVID-19. Uh, this year, it was also our 70th anniversary. So we had different 70th anniversary videos. So we posted those. Uh, and also, we put a link to our app. Um, that's another question I get a lot is uh, about the app. You know, maybe I can't use the app anymore. Uh, I would definitely still use the app. 
uh, you want to be certain to use those push notifications to drive people to the sessions because that's how you're going to keep people coming in and visiting the exhibit hall, coming in and looking at the on-demand sessions. So definitely keep the app. Awesome. That's great. So, you know, you kind of mentioned a little bit, but what was the feedback you got? Oh, our feedback has been amazing. I think all of our members have been very happy that we went virtual um, because that was something that we wanted to be certain that we did. We wanted to be certain to give people the content that they have signed up for. Uh, so that was really pleasing to hear. So we collected all of our testimonials and all of them were pretty much along the lines of thank you so much for providing this content to me. Uh, I, I'm really, you know, this has been a valuable experience. They even, we even had someone who registered after we went virtual and she wasn't able to attend live and it had nothing to do with COVID-19. It's just, she couldn't physically attend a, a live face-to-face -face meeting. And, and she, you know, is a longstanding member. In fact, she was a past president. And she said, it was so amazing to see all the faces and hear the voices of all of her friends and colleagues and because now she was able to participate virtually. Uh, so we got a lot of really good feedback. Uh, we haven't had any negative feedback about the site or, you know, about the reason why we went virtual. I think a lot of our members were just really happy that we were able to give them the content to give them an experience. That's ex that's just really exciting to hear. And, you know, everyone's going through this. And I've said this uh, on our very first video. Everyone's going through this pandemic. And experiencing it in different ways and if we can create some sense of normalcy by still providing this contact content then i think we're doing our job in uh -huh. some way absolutely so yeah. i really do appreciate you joining us and i want to get to questions from the audience so go ahead and comment below make sure that you uh ask your questions now while we have marcella's you know mm -hmm. undivided attention i also do want to just point out that we did a case study on sophie's transition uh to virtual so if you go ahead and you take a look on the com partners website you can go under the resources tab under customer stories and on the blog and you'll see the sophie transition and you can read the full story, uh, Maricela, right from Maricela's voice, she was able to really talk to our uh, content producer about how how awesome this this program was. So we'll go ahead and we'll get into some questions. We do have a question here already queued up, and it has to do with the the fees again, which I think it's a popular question um, about finding are people and employers willing to pay the same price? They have government uh, people who are kind of giving some pushback. Um, I think you said it really well with, um, with you know, justifying the, the pricing. Yes. And, you know, maybe also look into your non-member segment. And the reason why I said that, so once we made the decision to go virtual, we opened up registration from Elevate and we were able to get an additional 20 people. So normally our conference has 800. So we're able to get an additional 20 people in a, in a week. Of this 20, about 18 of them were non-members. So I think that speaks to the fact that our, our content is valuable to people who are not necessarily our members. So I think that's a segment that we want to look to and to really try and promote to and to let them know that Sophie's here. You know, we have this content because it's all about the profession that we serve as well. So I think that's a, a way that we want to look at that in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. You know, it's all about what evaluating the content. And I would also recommend just asking those that are getting pushback, what is it that they don't feel is valued? So you can kind of explain it a little bit. I think it's something that, you know, just a little explanation goes a long way. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any other questions? Let me take a look. Let's see doesn't look like we have any other questions right now. So I want to, again, thank you, Maricela, for joining me for this quick little Facebook Live. Uh, it has been a wonderful experience. I know that you're getting ready to do another one with us, so I'm really excited for you to <laughs> join us again. We'll, we'll do another one where it's, you know, Maricela 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Kate, for having me. Um, I would also encourage everyone to use the tools that you already have. Like I mentioned the app earlier, you know, really use social media to help you uh, use Twitter chats to drive people to your content. 
So uh, definitely look at those tools that you have available and have them uh, complement your virtual conference because all of that builds into the whole virtual experience. That's great. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And hopefully that puppy grows and doesn't drive you too insane. <laughs> Keeps, keeps you calm with your meditating. Yes. Yes. Quite the pause. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to end our discussion here if you don't have any more questions. But I really do want to thank you guys for joining us again. Um, also, if you do have any topics or questions that you do want us to talk about or address, go ahead and email us at marketing at compartners.com. Or you can also just go ahead and comment below and we'll make sure that we get those uh, those topic suggestions in. We will continue to try to bring you uh, the answers to all the questions that you've been asking us. Next week, we are going to discuss how to prepare for that planning meeting, uh, that first planning meeting for your virtual conference. So make sure you tune in for that. And as always, thank you to my production team, to Maricela, and to everyone. So we'll see you next week at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, stay safe, stay healthy.